Uh, good morning guys, uh, this is all TV and heavy industry, uh, I would say airsoft but I do a little bit of everything. Um, I've got this TM High Cycle G3 SAS and what I've noticed is uh, this has been a bit poorly in single shot. Um, so I'm going to strip it down and have a look at the internals. However, I've not seen a guide on the internet on uh, these, uh, these specific weapons, so uh, these specific specific riffs. So I'm going to obviously open this up for you today um, and then show you guys how to open it because it has some nuances compared to um, other weapons, uh, riffs obviously. So I'll open this up. This will be the first time I've ever done a disassembly video. Um, I'll show you obviously like tools that I use got them laid out here and I'll also show you some little nibbly bits that might fall out that might you know be of importance because uh, when I opened this up the first time there was bits falling out all over the shop and then at the end I'll actually show you the problem with the actual riff itself and then I was wondering if anyone could help me sort the problem out so I hope this is useful for you, for you today guys and I'll, uh, I'll crack on now okay so obviously I've got my G3 um, useful things to have for this sort of thing is a, a screwdriver set with uh, basically there's a lot of different you know screwdrivers the star type screwdrivers posies I've got a small allen key here which is used for uh, adjusting the height of the motor I'm not sure if you can see that but it's there um, give a knife you never know and you might have to chop into things or just use it to sort of prise things open um, a positive posy screwdriver I think that is a Phillips, is it Phillips number two, one, one or two. Uh, and I've also got this long arms multi, multi tool here. Um, and obviously a box for, storing your, box for storing your bits. So, you know, all this stuff is quite important. Um, always have a box to store your bits or a magnetic bowl would be better, but um, I'm gonna make do with this today because I've got a short amount of time to get this video done. And a cup of tea. You always need a cup of tea. So that was for that, and let's get on with it. Okay, so uh, the obviously the initial disassembly of the weapon, I've already taken uh, the uh, the flash to press it off. Um, and I've, obviously everyone knows how to take the battery case off. So I'll take that off there. Okay. So the first part that you want to be paying attention to is there's a screw here and there's a screw here and there's a screw here. Uh, these are flat heads, so I'll use my wrench. And uh, one lefty loosey, righty tighty. One screw. Uh, these have come off in two parts, uh, and if you want to just keep them together, just screw it together. Keep it in one part. Put it in the case. Second screw. Uh, you can obviously push the part through with the edge of a screwdriver. Be careful not to damage the thread, obviously. And then just pull the pull the screw out. Again, same screw. Screw it together. together in the box okay so uh, with the buttstock I found with the buttstock that uh, there's bits that's gonna fall out okay um, and you want to have the buttstock fully forward you might have problems actually pulling it away 
Uh, people do these guides, I would imagine, and then they never actually tell you these little nuances. So just pull on it gently. It'll slide out on its own. Uh, if you just, in case you pull it, pull it out like this, uh, and then just prise it apart gently. Like so. Okay, so I'll hold them together. And there is a part here. And there's a little piece of plastic that comes out. As you can see. Okay, keep hold of that. This also fell out when I first took it apart earlier. It's a metal clip. I'm not sure where it, where, where it came from. It came from this mechanism. However, <laughs> it still locks off just fine. It still functions normally, so co-optionally. And it's a metal spring, but that might fall out in the same time when you take this away. Okay, and also on the back here, if you look closely, uh, there's there's a plastic spacer. Take that off. Okay, keep hold of that. I'm not sure how optional that is. Okay, and then in here then you have your fuse box. And there's a Tamiya connector here which you need to disconnect. Uh, I just put a screwdriver down here. Just stand up for this one. And there's the uh, Tamiya release there, so just pop it in, like so. And just wiggle that out gently. And just pull this out. Sorry guys if it's a bit blurry, it is very blurry however. What can one do with that? But you get a point, you take your Tamiya connected out, like so. So like that, okay. Right. Now if you go back to the case, I'll just move this out of the way. Try and keep a clean workspace obviously. And then there's another screw here. You can see the screw there. Third screw. Every time I film a video, people decide to want to be loud bastards. Another screw. This one's shorter than the other two, uh, but then obviously that's useful. So that's obviously come from there, okay guys? Right, now with this then, um, if you look here closely, uh, this is the bottom the bottom receiver and then this is the main body um, It slides out. But you've got to make sure these wires are out the way so we can slide out So we can slide out correctly Just like that pull it out Now when I did this the first time a screw fell out. I'll, I'll point that screw out um, but Basically, you just want to be careful that no little bits come out and There we go, and there's obviously the low receiver and the gearbox. Just put that aside one second. Um, okay guys, so in here now, um, you have the battery connector. Uh, that's where obviously the magazine well is and the barrel is. Um, the good thing about this, the barrel just slides right out. Um, and there's a wire alongside the inside of here. Uh, you don't know if you can see it, but there's a wire along the inside of here. You might want to try and keep that flat. Uh, and if anyone thought that TM actually quite high quality with their parts, I'm starting to doubt that because it looks like they've used uh, plain old sellotape to keep the actual wiring in. Uh, but then obviously maybe they didn't want to glue it in because people might want to change that wiring. So I don't know. Anyway, just for the notes. Okay, so um, I won't strip this down anymore because you don't really need to. Uh, I'll take this barrel off. Basically, um, you can see that the the hop is in there like that okay so obviously where the, the rounds go in uh, you just push push on that up like this like so and then slide out and then you're left with small barrel hop a unit and hop adjuster um, but obviously for the purposes of repairing and troubleshooting 
you don't really need to strip this part any further. So if I just put that up, wait. Um, inside there, there's wiring. There's also the uh, spring for the caulking mechanism, which is deep inside by there. Okay, this is deep inside by there. But that's for all intensive purposes. You strip down to repair and change things. Okay. So obviously my point of interest is the gearbox and the lower receiver. Um, this is this has got a difference from the um, Jing Gong and whatever the makes of that's out there so far. Um, I watched a YouTube video and this is why I made the video in the first place. Is because I was like, no, 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 that's not working. This has got a strange nuance. Um, obviously the selector switch. That's that there. Um, I put it to fully auto because that pushes the selector plate all, all the way forward. It just seems to come out easier. Um, but the difference is on this one compared to the other um, G3 SAS is, is there is no screw here. Um, it is no rods connecting the firing selector to the other side. Um, it's actually, it's you know, it's free floating more or less. Um, okay, so, right. There's not many screws on here guys, okay, so what you need to do now is um, at the bottom of the pistol grip, there's two screws and there's also an allen key uh, hole for you to select the um, height of the motor. Okay, so we'll just screw that there. So, so two screws, lefty do see, righty tighty. I think what I'll do to keep these screws separate from them screws, I will, if you just bear with me a second. Nice drinks mat with a bottle opener. It's got a nice magnet on the bottom. I think I'll put the screws there. That's a good shot, yeah? Okay, and then a second screw. All right, this uh, will spring back, so obviously just hold it down with your, with your thumb. It's got a bit of spring from it from where the motor is springing out of the uh, from out the bottom of the gearbox. Screw two. And then just lift that off gently. Okay guys, so when you open this up now, take that off the, the butt the, the butt plate. Okay. Put that with them. Um, if you look there's the red wire, the black wire, and there's a small metal disc uh, on top of this motor here. Obviously that might fall out when you're doing it, so just be aware of that. Okay. I'm gonna take that off gently and put it in with the spare parts. Okay. Uh, take the red wire off, push it to the side, take the black wire, push it to the side. Uh, the red wire pushes out slightly. Um, this motor is kind of in there quite interestingly, quite tight, so. Uh, but it's not, it's not held in by any mechanism. Initially what I thought was is there's a screw here on the outside um, and I started messing with that, trying to open it up with my knife because it was just going to switch cheese with the uh, with a screwdriver. But that's actually a plastic screw. It's just literally for aesthetics, as far as I can tell. Oh, it's a really poor screw that doesn't do nothing, so it doesn't matter. However, sticking to the point at hand, uh, this motor is a bit of a potch. So, one second. If I just use this. Um, obviously this might not be recommended but in the motor um, what I actually remember doing is uh, where there is the copper wire joining onto the butt of the motor uh, there's actually a groove so I just wedged the groove underneath like that gently and I used it as levy to get the motor out. Um, this is the high cycle EG 30,000 so yeah okay I don't know if you guys, that's a point of interest there for you guys. Okay, so obviously now um, we're left with an empty uh, casing down by there. Now inside you guys, I would highly doubt if you can see it, but if you look in there physically, if you eyeball this one, um, there is two screws in here, okay? Um, and basically, they're positive screws. Okay, so I'm using a positive screwdriver again, guys. Um, and you unscrew these. Just get eyes on a second. Lefty Lucy, righty tighty. And 
just unscrew them. You'll see, you'll see them in there, guys. It's pretty obvious. Uh, make sure you're obviously doing this in a well lit room. Um, you also might want to uh, be aware of uh, the fact that the wires actually go through two specific holes. Pacifica, Pacifica. So yeah, let's just do that. Um, they actually stay in there, so if, if you're screwing and screwing and they're not, they're not obviously falling out of the sheaths, it doesn't matter. It's better if they stay in the screw sheaths because you might have a bit of a potch putting it back together. Right, okay. Keep going, round and around, take a little while. We're getting to the exciting bit shortly. The, the, well, the stress for a bit. Okay guys, so they don't come out all the way however, you know. Um, right, so with this now, Obviously, what you're going to do is just carefully pull away the handle, okay? Um, there's, just push the wires in, it feels like it's sticking and giving you resistance, but you just pull it forward, okay? Let the wires come out, making sure that you don't damage the wires, but if uh, TM are, are high quality as they state they are, and everyone seems to think they are, then, you know, they should stay in. Uh, the, the, the screws are in there, as you can see. I just kept it in that and I put it up like that onto the box to keep them there so I can just wash it back in. Uh, and then obviously with this there's the plastic low receiver. Um, on the high cycle there's this little plastic nib which is quite interesting but that needs to be taken off to strip down the gearbox anyway. Okay. okay, so obviously with this guys, this selector plate, there's a small spring. So you need to be careful when, you, when you're pulling this away, obviously you don't lose that small spring if it's come loose or whatnot. And I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, yeah. Flip it around. So obviously that's the lower receiver with a... And just remember, make note that you've got it for the auto. Obviously to put the fire selector in the right place on the way back. Um, so there's the fire selector, guys. There's a small spring be here, okay, by the fire selector. Um, that springed off when I uh, opened it the first time, so that might be a point to note for you. Okay, trigger, two red and black wire, uh, battery connector, and there's a plastic doobly do here. Use a positive screwdriver to remove that. Uh, it is held in with a large screw. Put that in the box of tricks. There. I'm going to move these two screws because I know where they are now into the box of tricks because I want to keep the screws from uh, the gearbox separate from everything else basically. Okay, let's move this out of the way. So I'm just going to zoom in here. So um, on this gearbox, uh, it's a version 2 gearbox, as far as I can, yeah, it's a version 2 gearbox um, and it, has, it shares a lot of similarities with uh, a normal version 2 gearbox, it's high cycle. Uh, positive screwdriver, positive screwdriver, positive screwdriver, positive screwdriver, and with these ones it is uh, a, one second, I think it's a T9. T9, T10, T10, screwdriver heads, um, I bought this screwdriver kit from Maplins for 5 quid, bargain, however it's, lo it's lost its torque, cheap and nasty, so this bit has lost its torque, uh, the plastic has gone naff on the inside, but you can still use that to, uh, you can still get it done anyway, so it's a, basically it's a T10 torque screwdriver, okay guys, so I'm going to strip this down now. I'll do the T the T ten screws first. You want to keep these separate from everything else just in case. Put that there. There's little washers that also come with this, okay guys? So you might want to keep hold of them. 
Um, yeah. T10. And a washer. Onto the little magnets. And then there's two T10s here. I suppose that was uh, Tokimari's version of keeping things secret or whatever. I don't know. But there's nothing special on the inside anyway. There is a few points to note, however. Nothing spectacular for a high cycle box. No groundbreaking technology, but then again, has there been any groundbreaking technology in the uh, airsoft by Polar Star or, you know? <clears throat> I'm not even into them. Alright, so washers and positive, so she took a positive out of there. Positive again, two positives. So. Uh, this one is a positive flathead, okay? So, Posi flat, or Phillips flat, whatever you want to call it. And this is another Phillips flat down by the red and black wire. Uh, this one has a spacer which is actually connected to the metal, so don't try and remove it if you can see by there. Nice shiny ring by there, have you guys? Nice. Zoom in a little bit more. Okay, so as you can see, so just, just for the note for you guys for later on, positive, positive, T10, 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 positive, T10, positive, okay? One more time. Positive, T10, positive, T10, T10, positive, positive, T10. Okay, guys. Obviously, that's just if you put it back together later on. Because this is a strip down. Um, I'll put it back together, but I won't be talking as I'm going. Okay. So, with this now, guys, um, there is, you see, there's a, there's, a, there's a brass nib there. Okay, that's where the spring is. So, what you want to do is be gentle with this now. Okay, push it in. Bit oh, gee, but you don't want to damage the actual spring, so let me just see if I can just do this without actually pushing it in. I'm just going to use the screwdriver to pry it a bit open. Ah, right, I see what's happened here. Okay, guys, so um, this gearbox is actually cracked along this line here. Um, so, obviously, the force of uh, the piston stroking forward has caused this to crack. So, this here. And here, there's, there's an actual crack up where the uh, the piston head is. Uh, there's not on this side. However, let me just check the spoon still there. And uh, it is on this side. So that's one problem I've got solved. And it should. Right, okay. A little bit potchy. But here you go. But I'm just going to split this out. Um, one second. Okay, so I'm basically trying to find a place to leave it open because I think uh, this is fused nicely shut. There we go. Okay, so um, I'm making a little bit of space and that's the broken bit that's just come off, guys. Okay, broken bit come off. What kind of that can't do nothing about that. Nice split there. Beautiful. Lovely. Okay, and then just close this open. Um, there's a good chance the spring can they'll come out guys if you put your thumb over here it's not like so ridiculously strong they'll take your thumb off okay but obviously just be aware and be ready to catch the tension should the spring come loose okay so just do it like that pull it open and voila so okay guys so uh, you have uh, the trigger uh, the tap it plates okay there's obviously the gears there piston um, something's not right with that piston 
and then there's the spring. The reason why I couldn't put it off is obviously the piston's pulling all the way back. So, clearly there's something going wrong there, isn't there? Okay, so I'm just gonna release that tension. And that's the spring coming out, guys. Maybe it'll let me up, and that's the anti-reversal latch, which won't. Okay, okay. So, there we go. Okay, guys, so obviously that's the, that's the, disassembly all the way down to the gearbox this is obviously where you can obviously figure out where your problems are um, that's the piston head there uh, the, the cylinder chamber the piston the tappet plates um, with this TM gears I'll push this back like so it's a bit different from the other ones I've seen on the internet this is why I made a video as well uh, this has a weird um, sort of like a nub like a metal nub, like a, an oblong nub, you, I think you can see it there. Um, and that is, yeah, so that's a little nub there, okay, uh, which is a little bit different. Now, the seating of this is a little bit different as well, and also, um, I think for peop for techies, I think this will actually benefit from sober vein because um, I put this into the angle of engagement position. By the way, guys, I'm no pro, however, you know, this is it is where it is now that's where the piston is if I move the the gears out the way uh, then that pushes forward and I, I'd say it's at least a good quarter of an inch well good quarter of an inch a good five millimeters of play in the uh, actual uh, piston there so well whatever it is called but anyway so I know what the problem is obviously with this guys it's overstroking or you know uh, I'm not too sure how to fix it so I'm probably gonna send it off to get fixed um, or buy a new gearbox casing because obviously I've got the, uh, the split for there um, but basically guys you know when you're putting this back together obviously reverse order um, I pay attention to the fact that there is shimmings on this okay guys so there's shimming there's a shimming there there's a shimming on top of here um, obviously if you break this down then you need to obviously be aware that shimmings might fall off there's bits that get up, work on a large table because if there's bits that fall off, then you know they might they might come in. You, you know you, you might have to rebuy the parts. Um, compared to the other G3 SESs, there's no random plastic parts that fall off, so that is a bonus. Um, but yeah, basically, you do you open this up in reverse order. If you want to pull the the piston out, you just push that up by here, and you keep pulling. Uh, the tappy plate. It will spring away from the actual select, uh, the actual, the actual gear here as you pull it upwards, so you can move this up. Um, basically, guys, don't be too scared, uh, but make sure you take note of where everything is. There's a small spring here. There's a small spring here. The soldering points, contact points here. And make sure all the wires obviously run along the side. Um, and that's pretty much it. So I hope this is helpful for high cycle owners. I know everyone's too scared to open up their TM high cycles. Um, but I've gone and done it because I know there's a problem now. I've got to get the money together to fix it because It's beyond my pay scale uh, um, But if anyone's got any ideas on how this Why this is overstroking it looks like there's been uh, uh, Teeth cut out naturally here um, and the last gear is actually metal so any advice and any any tips or any suggestions would be greatly appreciated um, and basically guys that's my tear down of the TM G3 SES high cycle and I hope it's helpful. Take it easy.